newsroom for telecom and tech professionals, and JSA Radio, the voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO of JSA. Welcome. Here with us today is Len Bozak, the XKL CEO and founder. He's also the visionary behind the eVelocity platform. Co-founder of Cisco Systems, Mr. Bozak launched XKL over 25 years ago forward-thinking company that engineers and implements optical networking solutions with the future in mind. Len, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you. So congratulations on that launch of this new product suite, eVelocity. And could you start by telling our viewers the basics behind the solution and what makes it unique in the marketplace? When you have a new uh, technology like Coherent 100 Gig, Really, the first thing that people want to do with it is take uh, a good number of the old technology, in this case, 10 gig, 10 gig client ports, and run them over that new technology. Well, 100 gigs been, in theory, available for a number of years, and but still it's true, as far as I'm aware, that uh, 10 gig is the big seller. More 10 gig client ports than anything else, and that's often the first application that, that people use 100 gig for. They're starting to need additional capacity, and we give them a good way to conveniently take uh, a whole bunch of additional 10 gig and run them up. Uh, there's an you know, alien wave on uh, existing system or a new system in Metro or even quite long haul. So this is a convenient way to take your, your 10 gig uh, ports and run 100 gig in an efficient way. We'll also let you uh, choose to, to statistically oversubscribe in a way that most users never notice. So it's uh, it's a very pleasant um, way of uh, not being just a simple mux. And there's intuitive technologies built in, such as statistical multiplexing. Um, that were used to engineer eVelocity. Could you tell us what those are and if they would be considered an industry first? Well, statistical multiplexing is a very old idea. It was used for character transmission in the 60s. But as far as I'm aware, we're the first people to do anything like that at this rate. We do, uh, sort of jokingly call this level one and a quarter, which is it's Ethernet frames all right, but it's not a switch, yet it gives you much of the benefit of a switch. So you can group uh, your, your client traffic and prioritize it separately. It lets you do, uh, now one of the really, two really interesting things are it lets you do a sort of uh, non-hard switch over opti uh, optical protection. So if you were, uh, if one of your links fail, you can have all the traffic go down another link, potentially oversubscribing it, but if it's the middle of the night, no one's going to notice, uh, and you get to, to not get the call then and fix it in the morning. The other thing you could potentially do with this is build a geographically distributed uh, router port multiplexer that's robust to, to individual link failures. And this gives you uh, an economic advantage in being able to use your expensive router switching decisions uh, at a higher capacity than you otherwise might. In, in talking about the, that user bandwidth consumption, what are the benefits for those users to be able to scale that bandwidth on demand? You don't have to know in an absolutely fixed sense what's going on with your clients to be able to have additional line efficiencies. This is a, a very convenient way to do that. You can set some general uh, parameters in the, the technique used to arbitrate uh, bandwidth conflicts is called deficit weight around Robin. Uh, our version of it is reasonably easy to set up and it, it gives you uh, a good control over what's going to happen. So it lets you produce a more economically efficient 
yet robust solution without having to uh, know in great detail what all the traffic is going to be moment by moment. You can see a real financial benefit for that for sure. So lastly, before we go, it's again an honor, Len, to have you, a visionary in our industry, sitting down with us today. So I have to ask, what optical networking trends are, can you predict uh, for us in the next year or two out? I don't know how well I can predict the, the specifics, but the hopes are faster, lower power, and if not actually lower cost, not more costly on a per bandwidth basis. Uh, faster, we've been, if you've been following, there's, there's many people who are w willing to promise you faster today, um, but we don't have, uh, how do you say, such a good result on the lower power and the price. Perhaps we can get all three of those to improve in the coming year. Uh, some of the more promising technologies, however, by the time you know, we think the components are qualified, it's, it's going to be the end of 2017. And that means uh, system products in 2018. We can hope. I'd like to go faster, but uh, I wouldn't make that bet. But still, faster, lower power, and it, the price is also a problem, but we're hoping. We're hoping. Well, thank you so much, Len, for your time here today. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Radio.